Our Old Testament reading this evening is from the book of Isaiah. This is part of chapter 58, which is an oracle contrasting righteous and unrighteous worship. These are verses 6 through 9a. Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house? And when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. May God add blessing to the reading and the hearing of this scripture. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. This is from chapter 6 of Matthew. This is from the Sermon on the Mount concerning fasting and concerning treasures. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. I, I don't want to disillusion you, but if you've decided to give up chocolate for Lent, <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> if, if you've decided, if you're a salt crunchy person, which I am, if you've decided to give up all kinds of chips, it, it's not going to work. If you've been really, really brave, and I suggested this to the confirmation class last week, as I recall, um, if you're really brave and, and you want to give up social media, <laughs> all screens, all screens, so you use your phone as a phone, no texting, no emailing. If you want to communicate with someone, you, you call them or you talk to them. No screens, TV, computers, iPads. It's, it's not going to work, is it? <laughs> I think we, we sort of misunderstand sometimes what, what all of those things are, are meant to do if we take them seriously. See, it's not about the things that we decide to, to try to self-will ourselves to do or not do during Lent. It's really not about that at all. It's, it's, about, it's about discerning or figuring out where our heart is in relationship to Jesus. In, in relationship to the God who created us in God's image and, and called us good. Well, what is our relationship with the self that God has created us to be? And has it been a while since we've thought about that? Maybe a long while, maybe ever. Because you see, trying to change our behaviors for even for the sake of faith, by simply trying to deal with a surface level of, of how it is that we consume too much chocolate, how it is we consume too much salt and fat, how, how it is we consume too much social media. What all of that is about, friends, is numbing ourselves or hiding ourselves from maybe what Frederick Beekner, who I read at the beginning, says that Jesus did when he went out into the wilderness 
and spent 40 days out there. Frederick Buechner says that he was trying to find out what it, what it meant to be Jesus and that perhaps we do well to spend these 40 days trying to figure out what it is to be us. Who is it to be you? And, and is that the you you want to be? So, so Lent is this journey of, of, of self-discovery with, with the blinds drawn up and the masks off. And that is scary business. Because do we really want to spend time figuring out who we are and kind of taking a look at what we really believe by where we spend our time, by where we spend our money, by the words that come out of our mouths, by the thoughts that control our minds? Do we want to spend time being that consciously aware of, of what our insides are doing? Or, or do, we want to, do we want to just continue to live by inertia? One day follows the next, follows the next, follows the next, follows the next. And what does that do to our relationship with God? Our relationship with ourselves? And as we will look through the journey of Lent, our relationship with those that we value the most who are around us. So I, I'm just gonna stop for a minute here and you're gonna get 45 seconds to a minute. And I want you to turn to someone or someone's near you and I want you to answer the first question Frederick Buechner asked. If you had to bet on whether there, God, whether there is a God or whether there isn't, which side would get your money and why? I'm most interested in the why. If you believe in God, and I sort of am making that assumption since you're here, at some level you have some, some belief in God, because I'm not sure what's on TV on Wednesday nights or what's on social media, but my guess is there's stuff. So take, take 45 seconds, turn to somebody or somebody's near you, and tell them if you would bet that there is a God or not, I'm going to assume the answer to that is yet, and why? Why? Starting now, go. Congratulations, you've started. You've started and I, I don't see anyone out there internally combusting. <laughs> it doesn't look to me like anyone has exploded with, with awkwardness or, or fear or, or all those things that we think might happen if we are self-revealing or if we're vulnerable. You know what Jesus says tonight in this part of the sermon, the very last sentence that Sean read, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so most often we kind of pass that off as uh, that, that that's only about money. It's only about wealth. It's only about material possessions, but I, I think that's underestimating it. What do we treasure? Do, do we treasure the the part that God plays in our lives? Do we treasure how it is that we've come to have a belief in God wherever that belief stands, whether it's a strong belief or a, or, or a fragile belief or a, a, an ordinary, we might consider an ordinary belief, belief or a, a sort of a non-dramatic non belief or a highly dramatic belief or a non-emotional belief or a highly emotional belief, however it is that you answer that question about why it is that you have some kind of belief in God, do we treasure that? Do we treasure it enough to, to maybe spend a little extra time during Lent um, asking ourselves, what has God done for me today? How have I seen God at work in my life today? How, I, how have I shared the love that, that, that God has placed in my heart? How do I share that love in such a way that others experience that love through me? Here comes another one. If you had something of value to say to somebody that you care about, maybe 
some wisdom that you've gained, maybe something, something that, that you would want to pass on to someone. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's helpful to think about whatever age you are, if you could tell your younger self, right? This, 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 makes a, this, make, this rises its head every once in a while in books and, and movies, but if you could tell your 13-year-old self, and if you're 13, if you could tell your five-year-old self something of value, 25 words or less, what, what would you, what have you learned that is valuable enough that you would want that self to know or you would want somebody you love to know that, that, that so that either they wouldn't have to learn it the hard way or that they would look forward to learning that because it's so valuable you, you don't want to, them to miss it. So you want to, you want to prepare them to learn it or to, to receive it or to understand it or, or you want them to, to not have to make the same mistake you did if that's, if that's what it is. So I'm gonna give you about another 45 to 60 seconds, right? Turn to one or two or whoever is sitting around you and what would you tell your younger self or somebody that you care about? What piece of advice would you give them in 25 words or less? You don't have to count, but in general. All right, let's spend some time. Congratulations, you've taken another step. And again, I, I don't at least see any of you running screaming from the room, having been horribly injured. <laughs> These things aren't easy, but my goodness, what value there is in being real, in, in taking time to do a little bit of reflection and in understanding that there's value in the life that you've lived, in the experiences that you've had, whether you're, whether you're five or 15 or 55 or 105, there's value because each day is a gift. The scripture says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you treasure your experiences, both the the wonderful celebratory ones and the, and the hard ones? Do you treasure those experiences in, in a willingness to, to understand that maybe they're a gift not only for you, but a, a gift to give to those that you care about the most? I think that's what Lent's about. I think that, that those 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness, getting to know who Jesus was, is not a bad it's not a bad example of a journey that we might want to take in the next 40 days. And so as we make this journey, we'll send out a question during the course of these weeks, maybe two or three during the week, on Facebook and all the other medias, platforms, stuff. And maybe you can spend a little bit of time, not just by yourself, but with someone that you either have trust with or you want to build deeper trust with. And maybe in sharing your heart and allowing someone to share their heart with you, maybe the treasure of our lives of faith together will be one that will not only change us, but change our world. Amen.